Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Outdoors with Hiking Bob podcast. I am your host, Hiking Bob Falcone, and you can find me on my website at hikingbob.com with links to my columns at The Independent, my other podcasts I've done, my photography website, all my social media. You can contact me there. You can sign up for my newsletter. And you can also help support this podcast at Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash Hiking Bob. And you can be a supporter of this podcast and help pay the bills and all that other kind of neat stuff. You can be rewarded for your patronage depending on the level of support you give. So check that out. All of that you can find on my website at HikingBob.com. And I'd like to brag on myself. This is the award-winning Outdoors with Hiking Bob podcast. So... I'll just throw that in there. Um, today is the first of a series of podcasts we're doing. We've done these every year for a couple of years now in support of the Pikes Peak Give program, which is a big campaign here in the Pikes Peak region, November and December, where a lot of nonprofits um, are supported with donations um, from the public. And today my guest is Susan Davies, the executive director of the Trails and Open Space Coalition and a longtime participant in the Give program, the Give campaign, I guess the better way to call it. And Susan, thanks for being here. Oh, thanks for letting me be here. Oh, of course. Um, so we're, we're going to have yourself and other um, groups, other nonprofits that are in the outdoors and other groups. There's a couple that are not necessarily in the great outdoors category, but they still pertain. So we're going to have some groups in here. Uh, you get to be first. Um, and I guess the thing is, let's start off with what the Give campaign is and what it does for people, what oh, it does for groups great. like yours. I can still remember when it was um, broached to me, the subject of Give, and I was, how is this going to work? Yeah. Will people be supportive. And I think that first year, Bob, we made something like $7,500 and we were on top of the world. Mm -hmm. Because again, this is money that we wouldn't necessarily get from anyone else. This was just coming to the community and saying, do you think there's value in what we do? And if you do, would you give a little? And we were thrilled. And then, oh my gosh, that was 14 years ago, 15 yeah. years ago. I can't even call recall, but I know that every year it's gone up a little bit. And last year, it was close to $50,000. Yeah. I mean, that is a game changer for us. Because, you know, m like many nonprofits, we are our people. Our staff is what creates the work, does the prog programs, um, creates the projects, and, and gets all this great work done. If I can put them into doing the work itself instead of, all right, we have to go out and raise money, you know, instead... Give helps us do that so right. that it, it, it gives us the ability then to do that much more work. So you can concentrate on getting your mission done. Exactly. Perfect. It's what we love to do. It's Perfect. why we do it. Perfect. So last year you guys were in the Give campaign. Let's do a, like a brief recap on how that worked out for you, what you guys were able to do with those funds, what your projects were, and then we'll talk about what's coming up for the next year. Sure. So we raised just close to, just a hair under about $50,000. And what that means is we, we put together this year's budget. We said, okay, because of this, we don't have to work on this many grants. We, we are not going to put as much pressure on ourselves as far as the, um, you know, for example, Starlight Spectacular. But what we can do is put more staff time into Get Out, Get Healthy, training trail ambassadors, working with our friends groups, the advocacy efforts. You know, we worked really hard to get the TOPS tax extended last year with 78% mm -hmm. of the vote. I mean, that was yard signs. That was going and talking to folks. It was, um, you know, doing a really huge social media campaign. First of all, though, just laying the field, just trying to get a, do a grassroots effort of, do you know what TOPS is? Do you know why it matters? Right. Do you know how much it would cost you if it was extended? And after we were able to tell that story to people, it was a no-brainer. And that's why 78% said yes. Okay. So I think that it really made a huge difference, I think, in that overall extension because it was all hands on deck. We all worked really hard to get information out and then get folks out to vote. And, and it went great. So for, the, for, for your organization, the Give just let you concentrate more on your mission than uh, fundraising and grant writing and stuff like that. Exactly, exactly. It's not, you know, it is, it does mean, Bob, that sometimes we can say yes, where we might have had to say no. You know, for example, the tendency of a nonprofit is 
to say yes, to take on more sure. and, and not to say, well, well, then we won't do this. We'll do less of this. We'll do more of this. And no, we just all kind of say, yeah, we'll get that. And nobody, and nobody wants to do that. Nobody. I mean, none, none of these organizations, and I've been involved with a number of them, ever want to say no to you anything. You want to say yes. Right. You want to do it all. You, you want to be um, impactful. You want to make your community better. So, But what this allowed us to do is say, all right, well, let's have a few more days where we're out there with get out, get healthy. Let's get, let Alan lead a few more bike rides in the southeast part of the city. Aaron, can you do a couple more training so that maybe we have just a few more trail ambassadors out on some of our most used trails? We were able to do that thanks to Give. Great, great. So let's look at um, this year's campaign and moving forward with next year. What do you, let, let me let me take a step back from that. Let me ask you with the looking ahead to next year. What do you see as the big? Uh, I don't know if challenge is the word I want to use, but what do you think is the big topics in outdoor recreation in the Pikes Peak region for the next year? What do you think are the big things that are going to gather people's attention? And then we'll talk about what you guys are going to do. Sure. In, in, well, it may not be stuff your guys are necessarily involved in, but let's yeah. see. You guys have your finger on the pulse of what's going on around here. So what do you think are the big things that are going to be happening in the Pikes Peak region next year? And then we'll move on to what you're going to be doing. Thank you. Great opportunities. You know, challenges slash opportunities, I would say. Yeah. So for one thing, we're hearing a lot of folks talk about, you know, the um, the large tax. You mm-hmm. know, we've talked, you and I've talked right. about that. The rental car and lodging tax. Yes, right? that it's essentially a tourist tax. Right. How do we get a group, how do we get some of our community leaders to to say, yes, we'll take that on. And Tosk has said, we'll be shoulder to shoulder with you. We'll absolutely do as we do with Tops. Get the word out. Make sure people right. understand and really mount a good campaign to get that done. So I think the opportunity could be to start laying the ground for that. I, I don't know that we'll actually get it on the ballot next November, but I think that's a, that, that could start. I do think it's possible that Tops will be back on the ballot a year from this month in November to perhaps look at e-bikes. And I know that we have taken a stand as an organization that we think that e-bikes should be allowed on our, our soft surface, wherever, wherever trail, wherever bikes are allowed, they should be. And, and that's because of, the, the huge impact they're having for our bike shops, the huge impact on certain user groups. You know, we've got a lot of older users that are getting back on bikes because they can with an e-bike. Right. And we're all about access. We're sure. all about getting as many people on trails as possible. So, you know, we think this is a good good place to why, put our energy. That's why parks are buying all those different mobility devices, Correct. right? Correct. So I think that it's a it's the right place for us to be on that. So I think there's going to be that to be talking about. Um, you and I have also talked about a county tops tax forever. Right. And I think, again, with the makeup of the commissioners right now, at least it's the time to start having people take that seriously and exploring what could be. Don't know that we'll have answers next year, but I think we need to start asking the right questions. So those are all sort of in the realm of advocacy and um, community awareness, grassroots efforts. But we also think there could be an opportunity to to uh, expand the ambassador program. Mm-hmm. We really think that um, incline ambassadors could be very helpful. You know, working with incline friends, if we could have some people that were on the incline on a more consistent basis to give more people information. So many people use that trail. So many people sure. love that trail. So many visitors are in town using it that maybe a, a stepped up ambassador program over there, I think we might put some time into effort in that. Um, Alan is doing some great work with Pike Ride, where they are getting people on Pike Ride bikes at a really discounted price, and they're using these bikes for um, transportation and recreation. But once they get the bikes, they need to go, how, how do I get there? Right. How do I get safely to my, you know, wherever, my library or my grocery store or the park I like to go to? There's nobody better than Alan to sit down with them and say, well, let's look at the maps. Let's figure out how you're going to do that. So he's putting that time in and getting people out on those those bikes. At the same time, he's still doing great work down in the southeast um, with the Rise Coalition and our Get Out, Get Healthy program where there are still people living in the southeast that don't even know they have a sand creek trail, a sand creek trail that now connects to the Pikes Peak Greenway because of the great Hancock um, intersection um, crossing. Right. So there are plenty of really good projects that we just want to put more time and effort into it and make our city that much safer for people on trails. Let's talk a little bit about the lodging and, and car rental tax. For, for people who aren't aware, it's a 2% sales tax basically on, on a hotel room or rental car 
um, far lower than almost any place else in the country. I mean, I've done the research. There have been a number of people who've emailed me about the research after I did the podcast with Mary Yemi a couple of months ago when he was in favor of this. Um, right now, the way that tax is written is they can't um, permanently designate a percentage to go to any specific thing. Basically, um, money can be divvied out to like the Parks Department, for example, but only on a kind of like a grant type of a thing. Hey, we're going to give you this much money this year or something like that. One of the things I've heard is they want is, is if they're going to raise it is that they also want to put in like some permanent um, allocations, I guess maybe is the best way I can put it to different, like the parks department and maybe to the police department for public safety or something like that. Uh, What's your thoughts on that? Do Do you think these things go hand in hand or should we take an incremental step to, 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 the, to change in the LART. Well, I, I tend to take a pragmatic approach, and that's to win. So I think to myself, what is it, what's, what messaging would convince somebody that this is something that, first, it's a no-brainer because they don't pay it. But right. second of all, it's something I really believe in. And I really do think a percentage of that fund that supports the parks that the tourists use, you know, let's come up with a top 10 list. And I think you and I could sit down and do that right now, right. you know, and, and say, exactly. So I think, you know, putting a percentage, don't put a dollar figure because it varies from year to year. Sure. But if you said, okay, if we're going to raise it from two to 4%, let's promise that maybe 1% of that 4% is going toward the parks that the tourists use. And oh, by the way, we all use too. I think that's going to be a real so like easy Guard sell. of the Gods, North Cheyenne Canyon, the really popular parks, exactly. the tourists, Red Rock, attract tours, Red Rock, Greenway, Rock. whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. I think things that they're using, exactly. Right. That makes sense to me. It yes. really does. I get a little nervous when you start talking about, well, police for public safety. And oh, oh, you know, maybe we need some low-income housing too for those people yeah. that work in the recreation. I mean, suddenly it all disappears. And then There's the, nothing left. And then the people who, who are against doing that allocation is specifically for that reason that they're concerned about, then it gets divided up so much that the purpose of that is to promote the city and to promote tourism. The next thing you know, Visit COS doesn't have any money left over. Right. They have to, and I do think they they get a certain amount. They really do. And that's something that comes from the city council. It isn't so much written to law, but city council agrees. And maybe in this case, city council could agree on how much the parks get. But but somehow I think we do mandate that a percentage goes toward those parks. Okay. Fair enough. You know, and... I think that part of the messaging for this is like you kind of alluded to was that the people who live here or the ones who have to vote on the tax, but are not the ones necessarily who pay it. I mean, if you rent a car, you might, you'll pay a little bit of it. If you decide you want to spend the night at the Antlers or the Broadmoor, you're going to pay it. But for the most part, this truly is a tourist tax. Absolutely. And, and, and I'll just put a little bit of my own two cents worth in here. People worry that if you double it, nobody's going to come to Colorado Springs because it's going to be 4%. I can guarantee you that, I've gone on places where it's far above even 4%. It's Absolutely. 8, 9, 10%. 13% in Columbus, Ohio. Yeah. Really? Yeah. What's, Columbus, Ohio? What's there to see in Columbus, Ohio? <laughs> and if you're from Columbus, Ohio, yeah, sorry, do not sorry, email sorry. me. <laughs> <laughs> but obviously, you know, when I went to Hawaii once, I did not care what it was. I was going to go to Hawaii. I was going to have a nice vacation. Right. And it was just built into my budget. Whatever it's going to cost, it's going to cost. Obviously, you don't want to be so stupid, outrageous that, you know, it's going to be obscene, trust me, at 4%, we're not anywhere close to that. I think it's a good idea. And I just think part of the messaging is to explain to people, you are probably not going to, the people who are going to vote on this are not going to be the ones who are going to pay it. It's the people who come here, don't live here, don't pay property taxes, and but are still using our parks. And we want them to use our parks. We want them to use our trails. We want them to go to all the places we have. But they should also be paying a little bit to help support this. I think that's a perfectly fair argument for it. And wouldn't it be great if LART, um, you know, was a little more prominent? So that here's what I'm saying. So someone walks into Garden of the Gods, once we've passed this increased LART tax, I think it would be lovely for there to be some kind of sign somewhere where tourists would say, would say, thank you, tourist. Yeah. Thank you for supporting this park. And right. you do so with your LART tax. Yeah. I mean, make that connection for them sure. too, so that they know that, you know, there's a good bathroom here. There's a fantastic bathroom both at Bancroft Park as well as over in talk Garden about of the Gods another time. But, but Garden of the Gods has a lovely bathroom. Sure. Do you know that people actually get married on the roof of that bathroom? I've seen people up there getting getting uh, portraits taken because it's that beautiful backdrop and, of kissing camels And they're on them. top of a bathroom, on right? On top of a bathroom. It cracks me Who up. knows? But the bottom line is, really, I do think we need to do a little better job of, of signing for LART and right. showing what LART has accomplished and what it could accomplish. Well, it's like anything else that's done here. We won't spend a whole lot of time on this, but like anything else that's been done, like when we had the 
the tax for you know repairing the roads. Mm-hmm. Um, 2C when, or whatever it was. 2C or whatever and it was. People knew. There were signs. It was great. Your 2C tax is paying to get this road improved. Exactly. When PPRTA, the Regional Transport uh, Authority, is out there doing road work, and that's a separate tax. There's a sign. This is being paid for by that tax that we're collecting, and you, you get to actually see what it's going to mm-hmm. Otherwise, people have no idea. Right. Um, and nobody has the time. You know, everybody's busy. Nobody has the time to go research it, but if you have that sign there, when you're stuck in traffic and wonder why they're repairing a road, and you see that, you know, that's how it's being paid for. So Well, and then I think it sort of um, squelches the whole argument that my tax dollars aren't being used effectively. Well, in, in part, you can see why some people might feel that way if they're not being informed right. on a regular basis. If, this is where it's going. If you don't know, how do you know? How do you know? Right. So I, I would like to see that. Great. Yeah. So we'll see. If we'll, it remains to be seen. We know the mayor's in favor of mm-hmm. it. And Whether, some members of council. Some members of council are, and there's, you know, I think we got a, we got the next election in a week. <laughs> well, actually, right. By the time this airs, right, will be after election day, to to get passed with other things and then mm-hmm. just move forward with that. There always seems to be something, isn't there? Oh, always, then, always, plenty so, to keep us busy. Yeah. So looking forward with the uh, Give campaign coming up. Um, first off, are you going to have any events? Um, we probably will have a couple. We probably okay. will do something in conjunction with Rocky Mountain Field Institute, which okay. we're looking forward to. We probably will also do something in the northern northern part of the county. We generally do something with um, Tri Lakes Cares up there, and, okay. and because people up in the northern part aren't as familiar with with Give, um, you know, events are a little bit hard to to gauge how well they do um we just had something the other day and you know half a dozen people showed up it's hard to get people to come out and do things there's so much going on seems like they're very weather dependent if the weather's really nice people want to go out and hike right or bike ride if the weather's really cold they all want to stay home right exactly (laughs) you got to find that day when the weather's like "Eh," yeah you know and and get people out they get people out and that's okay right but but we'll we'll do our best we'll we'll see if we can't get some things going we might have a couple of hikes or something that people can join them on but but yeah but we're going to be you know putting it out there saying look if you use these trails, parks, and open spaces, we would ask ask you to consider supporting us. Whatever level is comfortable for you, please, because it allows us to keep doing what we do. So you talked about the northern part of the county. The big issue going on up there right now is with the county park system is putting in a, a nature center at Fox Run Park, um, which there's a lot of stuff going on with that. Tell us what your group's in, involvement is with that if you have any involvement with that or just endorsing it or you helping them with that project or absolutely you with endorsing that? it you know we've been we've come to you know meetings you know we have our member list up in that area and we're going to keep them informed about that just like we did with section 16 right. you know so so we'll absolutely be be part of that solution and helping them with volunteers and we help out the friends of fox run up there and and they're kind of on top of it so yeah. we're excited and section 16 was a four mile trail that basically was a section in black forest that unbeknownst to even me, and I was on the county parks board, was just a lease from the state land board, and that lease went up in value, quite, quite went a up bit. in price quite a bit. I don't, say, I don't know that it went up in value so much as it went up in price. Significantly uh, so. And uh, the county almost lost it, but um, fortunately with your support, a lot of other people's support, the county said it was worth paying extra to keep it, and I would love to see the county eventually buy it. I would too. Um, would be right would be really because there's a big section in the middle you can't get to. I'd like to see trails all in that middle. So part would of it I. Too. So would I. All so, it takes is money. So. And that's going to connect the uh, the idea was to connect the pineries to that to to Black Forest. Black Forest. Then. Right. Yeah. Exactly. So, so, so it's a vital it's a vital piece in the middle there. It really is. And when you look at how rapidly that part of the county is growing, mm-hmm. you know they need places to yeah. play. They that's, need that. So that's why we put that pinery. In, exactly. in open space up there. Exactly. So yeah, that'll be exciting. So what else are you guys going to work on for the next year with, uh, you know, using the give funds as part of your overall funding? What else are you guys going to work on next year? So I would say that, you know, we'll be paying attention again to, to Southeast, you know, getting that signage into to, along the Sand Creek Trail. You know, some of the people that live down there don't even know they have a, a wonderful trail that mm-hmm. they could be accessing. Um, there are a couple real subpar parks down there, down in the Southeast. And we all know that residents in that area have... Um, much lower um, health outcomes, you know, that they really, they don't live as long, they're, they're sicker, and, and they, they, really, they really need to have the same 
access to quality parks that many other parts of the city have. Sure. So, so in terms of physical and mental health, we are going to be working with, with our partners to see, okay, what can we do at, say, Van Dees Park? It absolutely needs new basketball courts. And they're not cheap, right. but it needs to be pushed. It needs to get on the list so that those folks have a place to play outside. The neighborhood parks seem to be where there's been a lot of um, neglect. And when I say neglect, it's... Um, like anything else, it's budgetary right. driven. My neighborhood park has half of the tennis courts um, are padlocked, um, and and, and they're your not swimming used, pool. And their swimming pool has been sinking into the ground for a couple of years; hasn't been open. And you know, it's a destination. It was one of the few city-owned swimming pools that's been shut. Um, it seems to be an issue. Um, and the southeast is part of town has been, you know, neglected probably worse than other parts. For for I. I don't want to get into how many, for whatever reasons it could be, maybe because they were older places to begin with. I have no idea. The city parks department, along with every other department in the city, is taking a little bit of a budget cut this year. And already we know that like Greyhawk Park, which is supposed to be a one-year project, is now going to be a two-year project because it's just not enough money to do it one year. So, so But the, the 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 commitment is still there from the parks department to get that, that park done. Um, where do you see that going this year with that budget do you you think we're gonna it, it's not gonna be that we're gonna see little things like that or i'm not anticipating we're gonna see big changes in the parks department i think it's gonna be little things little like things. one year projects and become a two-year project but still gonna get done is that what you see happening I, with them? I, I do and you know what talking briefly about that budget process bob i have to say i was i was so gratified that for a change everybody took the same percentage cuts. Yeah. I was I was so grateful because all the years that I've been advocating and working in this organization, it's never been that way. Right. It's always been certain departments are the favorite child and certain departments are not. And and always parks were sort of at the bottom rung. Right. So so to the fact that it's being done fairly is something to celebrate. In my Everybody's book. taking the same, I'm about 3.4-ish so right. percent, give I'm or so take grateful. a couple I, tenths I, of a I think percent. It, it shows respect for parks. It shows that they are truly a critical infrastructure that yeah. we all rely on. So so I, I'm grateful to the council and the mayor for, for recognizing that and sticking with it. I think the way these things are going to be done, first of all, we seem to have a really good grants writer these days and that, that's yeah. being pretty successful with Stephanie Search. I also think that we have um, plenty of open opportunities and partnerships you know sometimes it's just connecting the dots so it's trails and open space coalition talking to trust republic land who's talking to park staff and saying look what would it take to improve the courts at bob's park or improving the courts at van Dees parks let's right. let's get it down let's put some time and effort into it let's set a deadline that we're going to have this done a year from now and then we can all celebrate and that's the kind of thing some of those littler projects will get done cool Cool. So you see your guys' role as trying to help just get this conversation going and Absolutely. maybe maybe accelerating things or maybe not making that one year project become a two year project, then become a three year project. Right. But but see it's so it's so easy for park staff to to just sort of say, Oh, we've got so much. Because they do. They do. You know, they have such a long backlog of needs and so it, it it's really the squeaky wheel thing. It's right. for us as advocates to say, No, 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 this one this one should rise to the surface and here's why and we'll help you do it. And many times what we do is we'll go into the neighborhood and say, Okay, who do you know? What companies would step forward and say, like some company says, we're going to put up $5,000. We'll put up five, and then if the city will put up this much, and the TPL will put up this much, and suddenly you've got a project. Right. But it's, it takes some time coordinating that kind and of thing. And there's a lot of fun using other people's money, too. Totally. <laughs> <laughs> you can make it go a long way doing that. You did mention Stephanie Search, the uh, grant writer. She has been doing a bang-up job with uh, getting a boatload of money. As a matter of fact, on the, one of our tops properties we purchased last year, she actually got, we had already paid for it. She got $1.2 million of that back. Yeah, some other I, funds I just want to work with her or, on some of my investments yeah, yeah. so I can get back money for some of these <laughs> things. That's pretty good. So, I mean, it's, she's been doing a really great job with, with, uh, with the grant writing there. So it's really good to see that that's really... There's money taking, out there. There's money out there. It takes a lot of time and dedication, not only to find it, but then to write the right grant application and supporting documents and wow. visits. And it's a, it's a lot more work. It's not just like filling out a form oh, and no. sending it in. It is a boatload of work. Well, you had to write, I think, a letter of support. I wrote a yeah. letter of support. And so all those pieces coming together. And that's kind of full circle back to give because when Here's we you. can have a pool of money that's going to keep our lights on, that's going to keep our staff paid, 
we can be spending our time working those other deals, right? We can be out there trying to improve that neighborhood, this neighborhood, that playground, that whatever. And and that's where we want to put our time anyway. So that's the beauty of that, circling all the way back to the Give Campaign, the beauty of that is people donate during the Give Campaign. That helps you guys fill your coffers. And then you can devote your time to help in the city parks department get grants or put people together with you put them together with people have money you can work with the county parks in like doing the the uh, northern um, uh, nature center at fox run park or looking at the possibility of a top tech at least exploring the possibility which i'm i'm happy to see that there's some consideration at least let's talk to people and see if there's actually any support for it exactly i think it's a, you, you have to start somewhere exactly let's see if people want it or not and that's what we're really good yeah. at because i will tell you it's so much easier asking for support for somebody else than it is asking for yourself, right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's like, wow, look at Toss there. They're trying to raise money for the people of Southeast. Right. Yes, because it's what we believe in. But And you don't have to spend time asking for money for yourself because, because this is the gifts. give when you get to do it. <laughs> That's right. Great. And so we are so grateful for your listeners who are have been so generous in the yeah. past. I, I appreciate that they've been generous too because it's great working with you guys all the time and getting stuff done and you're great staff here. Um, and you know, I get to go do hikes with your, with your donors during the course of the year, which and I, I get have to be on your award-winning podcast. You get to be on my award-winning podcast. Um, it's been great. It's not the Nobel Prize, people. It's not that exciting, <laughs> <laughs> but it's been it's it's it actually has been great. Susan, um, tell us how they can find you on the Give. Tell us how they can find your website, your social media. Tell people how they can find you so they, if they want to ask you questions or want to do some research on what you all do and sure. see your stuff, tell us how people can find you. Sure. So our website's a great place to start. We'd love you to also get on our email list. We we don't have an award-winning email. Um, <laughs> Mine uh, but, isn't but, either. <laughs> <laughs> but we do have a very good weekly trail talk that yeah. gives you a lot of great information and highlights a lot of Bob's podcasts, I will say. Thanks. Um, but trailsandopenspaces.org is our website. Um, you can email me at any time at susan at trailsandopenspaces.org or info at trailsandopenspaces.org. And if you just give on Give Pikes Peak, it'll take you to the website and just look up the outdoor segment and you'll find the Trails and Open Space Coalition. And it's really fast and easy to make a contribution. And while you're there, don't be stingy. Check out all the other categories and all the other groups in the non and the uh in the great outdoors category and um spends. and others too yeah. and they have rewards remember that this is one of the few programs that if you give you get so right. that if you make a certain level donation in in the aggregate to, to so many organizations you get some cool stuff some like nice discounts beverages on, yeah, and, discounts on beverages and yes, meals and all kinds stuff, of great stuff great there. stuff so, so do that so um, Susan, again, thank you so much for being on here. Best of luck with the Give Campaign. Thank you guys you. always do great, but again, it's it's you don't take it, it for granted. No, you never Every take year. it for granted, and and mm-hmm. you need the support so that you know. One of the things I, I I don't like, and I'm not talking about your group in particular, but just in in groups for, in general, is that they spend a lot of time doing fundraising during the course of the year. And of course, you understand why that's necessary. It's absolutely necessary. They need to raise funds. What's nice with the give is you don't have to be so persistent with that during the course of the year. That's true. So this is the chance for people to give to all these great organizations and maybe not have to hear from them so much during the year. Because we all have the same feelings. Like, oh, they're asking for money again. If you give now, you have to hear from them less during the year. It doesn't Very mean it, true. doesn't mean that the need goes away, but, but it, do, it doesn't have to make it so persistent. Funny story. So years ago, um, there was a philanthropist in town who gave us money two years in a row. And the third year she came to me, she said, okay, how much do you want this year? In kind of that tired, like, right. oh, here she goes again. I said, you know, I don't need any money this year. I did very well in Give. There I got go. a couple of other grants and we only ask for money when we need it. And she was like, that's never happened before. Right. It was a pretty funny moment. So, and, and it doesn't always happen, but it is that is something that Give does for us. It really does fill a hole that then allows us to do the work we're meant to do. Great, great. That's it. And that's exactly kind of the attitude I take with Give. It's like, this is my chance to really just spread the wealth. Spread the wealth. I have not to have this a is lot wealth. of wealth. This is wealth. <laughs> but spread, spread, you know, that I want to give to these groups. And a lot of times these are groups too that... I'm not even aware of because they're not in my sphere of whatever I'm involved in, but I see them all in the give. So there may be groups in there that people are not aware of that say, Hey, I like what they're doing. So I'm going to give them a little bit of money too and give them a little bit of money, but start off with, with trails and open space and the great outdoors category. 
near and dear but to my heart. Only if you use trails, parks, and open spaces. If you never use those things, if you never look at those things, don't give me any money. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but I'm sure you'll find a group in there that will that will do something for you that you need. I'm being a bit facetious because I know that everybody that's listening to your show they use those trails parks. If and they're open listening spaces. to the show, it's not because they're not they're, they're not they're only on the interstates and not on the trails. That's but right. That's great. Susan, can thank you for being on. Oh, my pleasure. And, and everybody, congratulations. Oh, thank you. And everybody, thanks for listening to the Outdoors Hiking Bob podcast.